What if Lucifer was gravity And science really was religion Welcome to Conflict Revolution Part 2, Module 2, Understanding Your Domain. If we go back to the ground rules, the first ground rule is that your domain is your responsibility. The second ground rule is that your domain is your responsibility. So in this episode, we introduce you to your domain, to the different parts of it, and how they interrelate. And then we're going to begin to teach you how to have a loving, healthy relationship to your domain. When we first started teaching Conflict Revolution, we used a metaphor for the domain of a garden. That you had a garden, and there's a garden gate that opens and closes, and a garden wall, and everything on this side of the wall in your garden is your domain. And this was a, a wonderful metaphor to help illustrate to people that, you know, when you're so busy looking at somebody else's domain over their garden wall and criticizing their weeds, you don't have time to actually look and see what's going on in your garden. What are you growing? What are you cultivating there? So it was a good way to show people how to get their focus on to where they have power and control and where they're supposed to be taking care of things. Then we began teaching it as the metaphor that you have 1,000 acres. So you have a plot of land and it's 1,000 acres, only you don't know that you have that much. You think you only have 10 acres. So there's this other 990 acres out there that are yours to control because you don't know that. They're sort of floundering out there. And on top of that, you live in a house in the middle of what you think are your 10 acres with three rooms, the three human dimensions, emotion, intuition, and intellect. So we use that metaphor very nicely for showing people how it would feel to discover that you have this unconscious, un non-physical self, 990 acres of neural net. So imagine sitting on the porch of your home in the middle of your thousand acres, you wouldn't see every single acre from your porch, but you know where it is and you know how to get there and measure it because it's on a plat map and there's directions, latitude, longitude, etc. So the domain is going to sort of give you a plat map for your own non-physical world. And when I wrote Imagining Einstein, out came this amazing unified field theory and maps, actual maps of uh, human consciousness and how physical reality is manifest. I'm going to save that for its own video. For me, making these maps from scratch and explaining the whole theory of how everything is created is like singing a song. And I'm going to do that separate. But for today, we are going to use the thousand acre metaphor. Because for me, a thousand acres is a gracious plenty. <laughs> Ten acres sometimes seems a little too much. Even just the house itself can be a handful. But we're going to go ahead and use the thousand acres as I show you your domain. So in understanding your domain, I want to introduce you to the idea of the greater you. Okay, there's the you sitting there in the chair with the body associating with kind of this little human form. But when we refer to the greater you, we're talking about the non-physical part of you as well, the other 990 acres. So the components of the domain that we're going to show you are these three rooms in your house, intuition, emotion, and intellect. Then we're going to introduce you to your witness. That is the one that's going to be observing those other three rooms in the house. And then 
we have the thousand acres of what we call, it's like a neural net. It's like a grid of intelligence from whence everything sort of arises and communicates. So those are the five elements, dimensions of the greater you of your domain. We're going to begin with the room of emotion. Now remember our value. Did you have every right and responsibility to learn to feel the full spectrum of emotion that's really going on within you? So what that means is that emotion is an energy and it flows through your body and it's what's connecting you to present moment, to the present moment experience. It, it, there's no language in the room of the emotion. If you were to go in, you wouldn't hear all the stories about why you think you're sad or if it's a good thing or a bad thing. You would just be in the I am of the present moment experience of it. So there wouldn't be a need to analyze it because you would just be having the experience of being it. I am sad or I am glad or I am frustrated or I am whatever it is. That's emotion. And we define it this way so you can begin to get a separation between emotion and intellect. We have grown up with these two things as, as if they're one thing. Feeling and thinking are like one thing. So we're going to pull them apart and get to know them separately. In the room of emotion, it's just joy, sadness, anger, frustration, what have you. No explanation. Present moment. Also, it's supposed to flow through your body. On the scientific in the unified field theory um, explanation of the domain, there's a, a gravitational wave that's flowing from the center of the earth up to the surface of the earth and it's actually flowing up and creating your body, which is the portal where you have your interactive experience with everything, the chair and the fire and the whole physical world. However, the physical world is only 10%, 5 or 10% of reality. The rest is non-physical, and it's on that gravitational wave. And emotion is the first step out of the nothing and into the one on its way to making the infinite this reality here. Now, whether you call the source God or you call it zero point gravity field or you call it compassion or whatever you call it at the root of all everything it's a mystery the spiritual people will tell you that and the scientific people will tell you that and we're going to accept that mystery and commit to it but somewhere out of nothing there's the first step that gets taken into the one and that's emotion it's that primordial soup where your molecules and my molecules and the molecules of the chair are beginning to emerge, but they're still in this shared presence where everything that I'm experiencing here in my physical world is originating inside me. And that's the level of emotion that we're talking about. Deep, deep power, your connection to your power. Now, when you don't let yourself feel, it doesn't go away. It doesn't just vaporize. It gets stuffed, and it goes into the basement. And maybe you didn't even know that you had a basement, <laughs> much less all those rooms down there filled with all those old feelings that you never let yourself feel. Yeah, they collect up inside you. In the science, we call it an abscess. But here in the 1,000 acres in your house, you have a room, a, 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 a basement full of feeling that you have to learn to empty out where you feel and you breathe it and you move it through your body without defining what it is. It's a therapeutic ability to feel the whole spectrum. The room in the basement can create depression. It can create physical illness. It can create a repetitive conflict that appears outside you. And if you don't take care of it, then it goes back into the toxic 40 where it becomes an environmental hazard. And frankly, I think that's what the world is going through right now, is that we're all emptying out lifetimes of emotion that we have not allowed 
to flow through our bodies. So that is the room of emotion. 